All right, this week we are going to continue um, just a little a two-part mini-series that we are doing on Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Uh, two weeks ago we talked about, uh, and we read through the story, and we talked about it through the first two of our pillars, um, engaging with God and one another, and then also reading through that story, realizing how God sees us, and some of the th- really good things that came out, and you can, you can go back to our YouTube channel and you can listen to those messages. I encourage you to do so if you missed them. Um, but just a quick recap, you know, when it comes to um, how Jesus sees us, how our Father sees us, this story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet, I think is a huge, huge, important part of our life. Don't, don't distance yourself from this story. Um, put yourself right in the middle of the story because if you do that, then you will realize that our Heavenly Father and His Son Jesus love each one of us so much that He would be willing to wash our feet. Now what does that mean here and now today? It means this. The, how do I say this? I'll just say it. The crap that's in your life, He's willing to come and wash off. That's what washing the feet was. It was literally moving, removing the dung and the stuff that they walked in. I mean, they were just wore sandals and all that stuff would get on their feet. Jesus literally got in front of the disciples and wiped all of that off of their feet. And so God wants to come into our lives and he wants to help us with our issues, amen? And so that's really important to understand because if you think God is an angry God, that he's just out here to get you and um, he doesn't really care about your life um, and your day to day, that's just not true. He loves you so much that he would come and want to be a part of the, the struggles, the, the stuff that you face and he wants to be a very important part of that and he wants to not only be a part of it but he wants to serve you in it. And that's really humbling, isn't it? But when you get that, you understand, man, wow, you you are valued in our Father's eyes, in the Son's eyes. And then we talked about once you understand that, engage with Him, then we can engage with one another in regards to serving, excuse me, in regards to serving one another. And so we talked about that and a lot of discussion came out, which was really good. This week what I wanna do is I wanna talk about the empower pillar, um, and uh, the tagline for our empower pillar um, is this, uh, don't go it alone, all right? Um, we're supposed to do these things together, and as I read through this story one more time, I want you to be reflecting on what is Jesus speaking to all of us in regards to serving, and not just one another individually, but what is God speaking to us in regards to serving corporately? What does it look like in a church when one another are actually serving each other? What does it look like in a community when a church family comes together and actually serves the community as a family? Now, I'm gonna be quite um, open and honest with you right now. I am a little nervous about this message um, because we're gonna take it into an area that I don't know if churches have done very well. And that is when they need people to step up and serve inside of the body or even inside of the community, um, I don't know if church has done this very well. And so we're going to talk about that and we're gonna open that up um, and here's, here's the truth. If you are willing to share and if you are willing to open your heart and just share what you've experienced and the things you've gone through, um, this is gonna be an incredible service. Um, if not, it's gonna be a really short service and it's just gonna flop right there and I'm a little nervous about how it's gonna go. I have a little more confidence because last night it did go well, um, but each service I know is a little bit different. So as I'm reading through this, how do you see empowerment taking place where you're not just doing this by yourself, but we're doing this as a corporate collective body. Um, and so then we'll, I'll, I'll teach a little bit about it and then I'm gonna, we're gonna pass the mic and um, we're gonna ask some thoughts and questions. If you wanna follow along, you can go to the version on the Bible app and the notes are there, the three little lines on the bottom right, click on it, hit events, you'll find us um, and you can follow along. But I'm gonna pick up the story again in John chapter 13, verse one. <clears throat> Let me pray first. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, and God, we give you this service. Holy Spirit, we know you are in this room with us, 
And so, Lord, we pray and we invite you to come into um, this discussion and this next 40 or 50 minutes, and we ask that you would lead us, that you would give us insight and revelation. Um, Lord, I pray that you would help us to realize that um, you use your church, your body, this family, uh, to bring the good news to not only one another in this room, but to bring the good news to a hurting and lost world. And so Lord, I pray that you would help us to um, read this story and um, realize what you are wanting to awaken and stir alive in our hearts and our lives. Lord, I pray that we would be good stewards of what you uh, share with us here in regards to being empowered to help one another, to be empowered to serve one another, to be empowered to serve um, our workplaces and our communities, our neighborhoods. And so Lord, I pray that you would come into this room, that you would speak directly to each one of us. Um, Lord, my heart is that there would be no guilt, no condemnation, and um, that there would be no sense of manipulation or uh, trying to stir something that is not from you. But Lord, I pray that you would stir each one of our hearts. And so Lord, we thank you for that in your name. Amen. It was just before Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? I'm gonna stop real quick and I'm just gonna say once again, do not distance yourself from this story. Put yourself in the disciples' um, shoes uh, and their feet right here um, and realize that Jesus did for them but he wants us to understand he has done for us as well. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord and rightly so for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Real quick, these things. Um, We talked about it last week a little bit, but I, I just, I want you to understand that um, what we're doing in, in my heart and my th- my th- what I feel like the Lord is leading is that these things um, really come from each one of us. Um, as the Lord speaks to us, if, if God wanted us to know exactly what these things were, he would have listed them there. But what it does is it drives us to go to the Lord and ask what these things are for each one of us. And this is where the collaboration and this is where hearing from one another becomes really relevant and important in equipping and training. Because when you hear somebody else speak, it brings up the thought in your mind, at least it does for me, that oh man, that's good, I could apply that. And there's been many times where I've heard from you guys that I've been like, oh my gosh, I would have never gotten that in hours and hours of study, but because somebody was willing to speak, um, I have a better understanding of what these things are. 
So I just want to encourage you and want to say thank you for participating and, and doing this with us. It's, it's, it's been a lot of fun, um, and I know for some of you, you're absolutely loving it. I know for others, you're like, oh man, I don't know. I don't know what's, what's happening. Um, fill the survey out. All right, okay, so uh, moving on. Um, okay, so I want to share just a few things that spoke to me in my study as we were talking about as a teaching team in regards to the empowerment pillar um, when it comes to this story. And then I want to ask some questions of you and get a discussion going in regards to how do we do what Jesus is asking us to do. Um, our ultimate goal is to multiply. Our, our last pillar is to multiply, meaning this. Take what God has given to us, who he says we are, um, take our relationship with him and one another, be empowered in what he's done for us, the gifts that he's given us, the call that he's placed on our hearts, and then take it out into this world and multiply that. Um, I don't know if the Capital C Church has done a really effective job on that, and I wonder personally, and I'm just speaking off the top of my head right now, but I wonder personally if part of that reason is because we haven't empowered one another in the church to serve real well. Um, hmm. So, Jesus says here that he has set an example that you should do as I have done. Now, Jesus, you, I'm sure you've heard this, but Jesus is our hero, Jesus is our role model, he's the one that we're to look up to, um, he is the one that kind of sets the path according to how we are supposed to do things, and it's, do you find, at least I find in my life, that uh, some things are easier to uh, subscribe to than others. For instance, the way that Jesus loved people, I totally am like, okay, I wanna love that way, absolutely. Um, but when it comes to the fact that Jesus stooped down and became lower than all of his disciples to wash the junk off of their feet, um, I don't know if I want to do that. Anybody else? I'm reading a book called The Leadership Paradox right now, and it's talking about how we in this world have created this uh, top-down mentality in regards to leadership, um, and that Jesus was like, no, and he did everything he could to actually try to break that system down um, and help us to realize that it's not about the top down, it's actually about going under. Um, as a matter of fact, that section in Ephesians, right before it speaks to husbands and wives and their roles in marriage, in chapter five, it says this, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That word submit means this, to voluntarily place yourself under to voluntarily place yourself under. Voluntarily place yourself under. I don't like this. The world absolutely hates this. As a matter of fact, I think if you subscribe to the things that the world would say is, man, you get your own. You do whatever it takes to get to the top. And what Jesus says, if you want to get to the top, you voluntarily put yourself underneath. And this is a paradoxical theme and it's a paradoxical idea. And so um, when Jesus says, I set an example before you, he is saying, church, this is how I want you to respond to one another. Do you guys agree with that? He's saying, serve one another. Wash one another's feet. Get into the filth and be willing to go lower than the other person. Can you imagine if a church, well, even right after that, I'll, I'll say this in, in the weddings that I did, a wedding yesterday afternoon, beautiful day, it was just amazing, and in the middle of my uh, talk to the, the bride and groom, I said this, um, if you guys will have a healthy little competition for the rest of your life to see who can outserve who, if you will do that, your marriage will go incredibly well. It's when we start to demand things from one another, that's when we get in trouble relationship-wise, yes? And so, church, what if we were to voluntarily place ourselves under each other and try to outserve one another? What would the church look like? What would this world look like if we then took that out here into the world? It would be amazing, yes? And so, um, I believe what Jesus is saying is this. Um, we need to empower one another to put ourselves under each other. <laughs> I 
I hope I'm communicating that okay. I, it's, it's, it's kind of a difficult thing to grab a hold of and, and even diff- more difficult to share and uh, communicate what I believe the heart of the Lord is. A um, few things that, um, uh, thoughts regarding the empowering then. Um, first off, <clears throat> I want to recognize, as we start to talking about serving inside the church and serving into our community, I want to recognize and I want to thank everybody that is serving. I realize that many of you are doing great things that you're serving either inside of this church or you're serving in other ministries or things in our community. And as we get into this discussion, I don't want the enemy to come in and tell you or make you feel like we don't Uh, think that you're doing anything. That is not the heart of this at all. I want you to hear me right now and and those that are doing things for God and serving, I want to applaud you and I want to thank you for that, okay? Everybody hear that? Okay, second, I want to apologize. I want to stand up before all of you in the name of any church ministry leader or, or person and I want to just simply say, Uh, I'm sorry for any hurt or anything that has been done in regards to this topic of serving, um, whether it be somebody manipulating you into doing something for a church or a ministry, or it be somebody took advantage of of your heart to serve and actually uh, just drove you until you were like, I can't do this anymore and created hurt and pain, Um, or even to the person where somebody has asked for help um, from a church level or ministry level, got you to sign up for something, and then nobody ever called you. Um, And got you, you know, okay, yes, this is what I'm supposed to do, and then they didn't follow up and follow through. I've been in ministry for over 25 years. I know that these are some of the things that have happened, and so I just want to, on behalf of leadership's sake, apologize. And say forgive us as ministry leaders because um, to be quite honest with you, this is one of the most difficult thing from a leadership position to try to teach. Uh, You know, here's the truth. Um, To serve is something that Jesus asked us and actually I would say requires us to do. But when we get in our human side and begin, begin to bring it out in our flesh, there can be manipulation, there can be coercion, uh, there can be all kinds of different reasons, which brings me to my third point as we talk about this. Um, all of this needs to come from a heart of love. So um, here's, um, here's where we need your help as a leadership team. If we ever ask you to do something and it's not from a heart of love, tell us. We're not perfect. Um, We don't always know all the ways to do things. Um, And we do understand that love's gotta be the the motivating factor, but sometimes we cross over into other areas um, where it can be manipulative, it can, uh, it can, you know, (laughs) <laughs> I just have been a part of churches and, and places where I, you know, people are brought up and they tell a story and everybody's got tears and everybody signs up because, you know, and it can be powerful. Testimony is a powerful thing, but when it's used to get things that maybe the Lord is not leading, it's wrong. Yes? And so um, when we talk about serving, it's gotta come from the heart of love and sometimes we miss it as leaders and sometimes everybody in this room misses it in interacting in relationship, yes? And so, let's call it out. I I don't know uh, why we created, or uh, what, uh, let me, I just seen many times that what happens is instead of calling it out and actually going to somebody and talking about it and saying, hey, you know what, I didn't feel loved in the middle of that, and instead of that, we just part ways and we never address it. So then the problem just compounds itself. Yes, do you know what I mean? Okay, so let's, let's do this through the idea of love. Um, the attitude of serving um, should come from that heart of love, not from guilt, not from pressure, not from an expectation. Um, it should come from love. 
Another thought regarding empowering one another is that uh, many times when it comes to serving, we have this idea or mentality that uh, serving needs to come from a gifting that we have. And absolutely, God has given each one of us giftings and talents to do different things. With that being said, uh, if, if you have a gifting and talent that God is highlighting, jump in somewhere, whether it's in the church or in our community, and use that talent and gift, absolutely. But God also uses needs. And there are times where sometimes um, you may not necessarily have a gifting, but God wants to use you to fulfill a need. Um, when I moved from South Carolina, my wife and I and our two kids moved from South Carolina to help Pastor John with Jubilee. I was a youth pastor at the time, and I came back and he said, well, do you, you wanna be a youth pastor? And I'm like, well, I, you already have a youth pastor. And he's like, yeah, I know, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> and I go, well, I, I mean, I don't wanna take his position. And he's like, yeah, you can't. <laughs> like, okay. Um, and I'm like, I don't know exactly what. And he goes, you know, sometimes God just gives you a heart to fill any need. Um, and so if, if that's your heart, then we've got things for you that you could do. And I said, okay, well, what, what's a need? And he goes, we need a tape duplicator. <laughs> okay, I'll duplicate tapes. And that's what I did. And then we duplicated CDs. And then I became the business administrator. Then I was a small group leader. Then I was a campus pastor. A and my, my role in my hat moved because I was willing to jump into a need. Do you know part of that tape duplicating business, the transformation from there to business administrator, I had to clean the church. It's not a fun job. You guys are messy. <laughs> I mean, not here, at other churches, they're absolutely messy. Um, <laughs> But you know what, all of those things and just meeting those needs actually developed in me um, what, what I am today. And so I just wanna encourage you as we talk about these things, maybe God is asking you to just meet a need. Um, and then the last one is this. When we talk about serving and empowering one another, I want to talk about what it looks like inside of our church, without a doubt, but I also wanna talk about it in this community. My heart, and I know I've shared this with you, but I'll share it again. My heart is that if, if the doors of Shine Church ever were to shut, that our community would miss us. That they would miss us. That um, there would be a hole left because we are out in the community. And somebody last night actually said, um, you know what, if we do this right, Shine Church could shut down and they wouldn't miss us because we would already be out there doing it. Ooh, I thought that was good. But the heart is, are we really serving and washing the feet of the people in our community, even when they have different thoughts and ideas and positions than we do? Are we telling them how wrong they are? Or are we coming into their world and serving them in the midst of that? What does that look like? So, um, gonna transition now and ask for you guys to, to help us out. So, um, if you're following along, I've got a couple questions. I'm gonna change uh, some of the wording of these um, just from last night and what kinda seemed to bring life. But the first question is this. What do you feel Shine is doing well when it comes um, to all of us um, serving? And before I have you answer that question, I just want to simply ask you a question. Um, when I say Shine Church, what comes to mind? <coughs> All the people in the church. Okay, good. Any other thought? House church. House church. Okay, it's good. The what? A light in the world. Okay, good. Love this. Did anybody have the thought of uh, the? pastoral staff? Yes, okay. Uh, anybody have the thought of this building? Yes, couple. Um, I want you to realize when I ask this question, what are we doing well in serving one another and serving our community? Um, I want you to filter it through the fact that you are Shine Church, okay? I, if you have feedback for us as a leadership, absolutely, we'll take it, we want it, speak it out. But I want you to also realize that this is a question that really is, uh, can go right into you internally. What are you doing well? When it comes to serving, what are you doing well? What are we do as a church doing well? 
All right. Anybody have any thoughts to come to mind? Okay, hands are starting to come up. Please state your name before you speak. I'm Adrian. Um, I think this church is doing a really good job of being friendly to each other. And I think that's something that a lot of churches don't do. So even though that's a simple thing, I think it's huge. So just being like friendly and neighborly and kind to each other and reaching out, not being s super quiet and only focused on the service. Very good, and I would absolutely agree with you, and I want to applaud everybody in this room um, because one of the things that we've heard many times is that when people walk in the store, um, they feel very much um, welcome, and not just from our the pastoral staff, but from you guys. I watch you guys interact with people. I watch you go to people that maybe you have never seen before and introduce yourself, and I just want to say, well done. That That's really, really really well done. Someone texted in online, um, I think Ch uh, Shine Church is doing great at hearing each other and being empathetic towards one another. Mm. I totally, I totally agree with that too. Eli, did you have your head? Can you grab the mic real quick so I don't have to repeat it? Hi, I'm Eli. Um, yeah, I was about to say the same thing just because we are um, new to the church, but the reason why we came back is because we felt so welcomed and um, everybody's open and willing to um, be vulnerable and um, willing to share. And I mean, it makes it um, easier to go through life knowing that like um, everybody's kind of going through the same things, so. That's good, thank you for sharing, appreciate that. Good morning, my name is Sandra. One of the things I love about Shine Church is the dialogue and um, allowing and encouraging people in the congregation to use their voice because what we're really doing is we're ministering to each other and I, um, I some of the things that people have said have really hit my heart and ministered to me, but it also is teaching people to use their voice and preparing them to ministry in the world. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Someone texted really helping in. us in the home churches, too, because of what we're doing here, learning to dialogue versus monologue all the time. We're, we're practicing that at our home church now, too. Yeah. So pick you back on that. Someone texted in, Shine is doing a good job of being authentic. Hmm. That's good. I was going to shout out all the house church leaders and the food that they make, and <laughs> yes. I, we're doing food that well. ministers to me. I, I, we're serving <laughs> each other with food, absolutely. Yeah. It's really good. And leading through the stories, and you know, just sending yeah. out texts, and it's been good. It's good. I, I feel like as far as, oh, I'm Ben, and I feel like as far as serving goes, uh, the pastoral staff does encourage people to use their gifts, which I think is a big thing. I think uh, a lot of times, you can show up and sit on the sidelines and watch church, but I think you guys do a good job of not guilting, but encouraging, like God does give us gifts he wants us to use. He's the one that gave us those gifts to use them. So yeah. I think you guys do a good job of that. Good. Any other thoughts that come up? Someone else texted in, uh, people are opening up their houses uh, even during what's going on in the world. Hmm. So I think speaking of house That's church. That's good. That's really good. Uh -huh. That was the slowest hand raise I've, <laughs> I've experienced in this process. Oh, that's really good, John. <laughs> With reluctance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is John, and I think that Shine Church has done a fantastic job of setting the stage for us to develop friendships with each other. I have never developed so many close friends so quickly. Hmm, thanks for sharing right there. Um, I echo just the empathy that we have for one another and sharing of story and vulnerability and rawness. I feel like there, it's a safe place to do that. I have cried the ugly cry oftentimes at church. And it's not just that, too. It's this <laughs> feeling of I almost 
100% of the time, someone will pray for me before I leave. Um, and so it's kind of this like loop, this closure that happens here um, that I haven't experienced before. Thank you for saying that, Jackie, because I, I just want to encourage all of you and um, I want to encourage you and then I want to challenge you. One of the things that I have seen um, since we really pressed into this interaction part this year is that after the service, I watch people go to other people that have shared and pray for them and speak over them and um, even invite and, and go out. I know, of, I know of several people that have actually scheduled a lunch together and had community. I wanna encourage you, keep doing that. And I would submit to you that one of the ways that we serve one another is to hear God for each other and be bold enough and courageous enough to speak that out over people. And I want you to um, do that and continue to do that and wanna challenge you in that. Um, if, as somebody's speaking, the Holy Spirit puts something into your heart or your mind for that person, you don't have to raise your hand and speak it out then. You can if you want, but afterwards, make sure you give that word to that person. That's a great way to serve. That is a great way to serve one another. And by the way, here's how that equips and trains you. If you get used to doing that in here, then the Lord will use you in the grocery store or in your neighborhood, and because you get equipped and trained in here to do that with one another, you might be in the grocery store line and the Holy Spirit drop a nugget for the cashier right there. And if you give that nugget, nugget to the cashier, she might start to cry. She might be like, how did you know that? And you're gonna go, well, I've learned here to hear God's voice and I believe God wants you to know this. And that's a powerful way to serve our community. Incredibly powerful. But if we don't get used to doing it in here, how are we going to do it out there? Um, I mean, we can try. We can, we can try to do it, but man, it's so much easier when we've done it in here for a little bit, right? All right, I want to move into the second thing. What are areas that um, you want to improve in? And you being you individually, because we all make up the church, um, or maybe corporately, Shine Church, that makes all of us, what would you like to see um, us improve in? Uh, I'm Rebecca, um, and I know, well, I'm a huge procrastinator, for one. I'll just start with that. Um, but then for two, I know something that I've been meaning to do but haven't is sign up to like help with the kids to help be somebody who helps you know watch them during the service. And so I'm somebody who would love to sit here for like four hours every Sunday and discuss everything that there is to be discussed. However, if I want that for me, then I need to be that for other people to be somebody who's in childcare and being like, well, this Sunday I'm here, so you guys can stay as long as you want, type of thing. So basically just saying, I know like for myself, I need to just get on the ball and sign up, and I'm sure there's other people that probably feel the same way, but you know, the whole like, be the change you wanna see, you know. That's so good. Oh man, thank you for sharing that. I, I, here's the struggle from us as a leadership team, and one of the things, just so you know, we talked about this particular message in regards to service in the early part of November, but the Lord kept delaying it, delaying it, delaying it. And I believe one of the reasons is because he wanted to set up the structure of what we've been doing so that we could then enter into this. But one of the things that we, as a teaching team, um, have been just talking about is how do we do this as a church? Because I, I, we can bring kids up here and have them tell you a story and, and you guys all weep and go, okay, now sign up for kids ministry. And then you, you do it, but you feel manipulated into doing it. Does that make sense? Um, and that's, that's not what we want to do. We don't want to do that, but yet we have needs. Um, and I'm just gonna go on this because you said that. We, Stephen and Joanne need help in our kids ministry. We need help in the kids ministry and the nursery ministry. Um, people that just want to love um, those, those little kids and, and help them to realize there's no junior version of the Holy Spirit and, and all that. But we don't, 
I'm just inviting you into the back room of church leadership discussions that I have been part of for 25 plus years, and I don't know if I've ever seen anybody bring it to the church and just say, hey, join us in the back room, because what we're trying to figure out as leadership is how do we get positions filled? Uh, Donna is sitting back here. She's constantly saying, I need more coffee bar workers. I need more coffee bar workers. DJ has to greet because uh, we need more greeters. We need, I, so we, we, we could do this big big message on Jesus serving one another and how he washes his feet and we need to wash one another's feet. And so out in the foyer are 45 signups that you can sign up for and you're not a real Christian unless you sign up for them on your way out. I thought that might get a little laugh, but I, okay, you guys are like, oh my gosh, what's going on? <laughs> Uh, and we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. But here's the truth. We're a family. And you know what? There are certain things in this family that need to get done. Just like on Thanksgiving at your house for, for family at Thanksgiving, hey, everybody's got to do a part and, and, you know, different positions, different things. People are cooking different fruits, bringing different things. We all need to, to fit in and fill that part. Um, so I, we're coming to you and asking you, help us to figure out how to navigate that well. Because again, I don't know if church has done this very well, and we want, to, we want to do that. And if you feel prompted by the Holy Spirit to do something, I want to encourage you, do it. Um, and I know sometimes you're, well, I just, we're just waiting for you to say it. Well, I can understand that, but yet other times we have, we've done things. Donna brought up um, that you know, we, we did a coffee bar video. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember that, but Ben Lair did a good job putting together me stealing a Mountain Dew out of the coffee bar, and just, you know, it was a fun thing. Uh, and we got a couple signups, but I, you know, how do we how do we navigate this as a church? Um, and so I, I would I would love to see us to have all those things filled, but yet without any manipulation or coercion or all of that. Ben. Uh, for me, one of the things I struggle with is like committing ahead of time, like three weeks ahead of time, knowing I had to be there for that week. Just that's to be honest we're with you, a last minute sign I'm up a very state. last minute sign up. And that's yeah. what I was going to say. My favorite <laughs> is when DJ comes back here and says, hey, you want to hold the mic today? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can do that. No problem. This might sound lame. If you had like a, a floater roll that or a last minute text to a group of people that says, hey, we need a greeter for tomorrow and there's 12 people that get that text. That's for me, I'd be down to show up early and greet. Just being real, I don't know if I would be down three weeks from now to show up early and greet. Like, just, just being honest, I'm like, oh, three I weeks from it. now, heck, I might not be here, you know? So for me, whenever I get asked last minute for something, I'm, I'm always down. I'd be down to help in kids. Am I down to help every fourth Sunday? I don't know. And that's probably a bad thing. Maybe millennials, I think we all have a hard time committing, but... <laughs> But just being honest, I'm like, if it's a last minute fill in that you need, I'm, I'd totally be down to do that. It's the committing long term ahead of time that I hate. So, so DJ, here's what I'm learning. We just need one sign up sheet out there, last minute sign up. Everybody will sign up for it. Midnight we just, Friday. Midnight Friday. Everybody, all the positions, <laughs> they, all, they all get filled in. No, that's good. That, now, that's, I, I love that feedback. Yeah. Um, that's, that's great because. I, I think one of the things that hinders people from serving is just busy schedules, yes? Yeah. I mean, that's, um, that's one of the things that absolutely hinders um, people from being able to do it. And sometimes the commitment thing, uh, some people are planners and really would love to be able to plan out for the next three months. Others don't, so f yeah. Sorry. Hi, I'm Amy. Um, I'm gonna bring it back around to the children's ministry because I do help Stephen and Joanna. Um, and they do, they need a lot of help. And one of the reasons that I started doing that was because I had seen him in the children's ministry room every single time I dropped my kid off. And so one time I asked him, when was the last time that you sat in a, in a service? And he said, like three months ago. And so that was like, I help once, once a week. And, or once a month, sorry, <laughs> once a month. And I, I come from a background of my mom as a children's ministry teacher and all that stuff. So my mentality is how many of us have children that are in children's ministry? If we all signed up, we would only have to serve once every three months. You know, so I, I think the more we, 
we are willing to serve, the less the burden is on every single person. Wow, you just said something incredibly powerful that I wish I would have prepared and planned that, but what you just said was absolutely amazing. If we all catch this and share the burden, the work will be light. With many hands, the, the work is light, yes? Um, just so you know, backroom conversation. We've had this discussion many times. Do we make parents who have kids, if you want to have childcare, you have to work in the nursery? That, that's been a conversation in 25 years of ministry that, that I've had in, in different things. And I know some churches that actually do that. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying I don't, I don't know if that's the most effective way to, to get people to, to help out. And yet, if, if you, you have the heart to do that, what Amy's saying, do you guys see the, the, the difficult balance here and the tension that, that we wrestle with from a leadership st- standpoint? Um, help us. I, I'm just, I'm coming to you. I don't know any other way to say it than help us navigate and figure out how to do this well um, so that Donna doesn't have to do the coffee bar every s- single week and, and I, it, you know, I, help us. And if you guys got ideas, I love Ben's idea. We'll probably talk about it as a staff and figure out, okay, how do we get that last minute sign up? Because I know Peter would be right there with that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes? Okay, this is Adrian again. I have a funny little thought, and that is this. I think sometimes if like when you guys did the announcements, I always wish I knew what Shine was struggling with. And I think you could be a little more truthful about it. Like, hey guys, we are just not getting anyone signing up for a coffee bar, or we really need a few children things, or we really need more donations this month. I just wish I knew where the struggles were. Because, you know, like, then we could target it. Okay. That's all. I, I, love, I love what you just said there. But what I've seen, and maybe, maybe you guys can help us create it, come up with creative ways to do it, but what I've seen is that when we start to do that, it be, starts to become on a weekend. And all of a sudden, I watched the, the people just tune it out. And, and I, again, I'm going back to years of ministry and, and things um, where I've been part of places where we've done videos after videos of, oh, here, we need this, we need that, we need, and it just, it just gets tuned out. Um, so I, I think I might have a solution that we're gonna potentially try. I'll bring it up in a minute, but I wanna, there's some other hands, so. Um, I was actually thinking about this at the beginning of service, because we have some things that I've been thinking about with, and it came up with that needs thing, and I literally thought of a online, because a lot of people like to interact online or through text, and I thought, I have these things, and I really want to be able to give them away to a family in need, and I was like, I wish there was a need button online, or a place that we can, like a bulletin or something, to where if somebody had a need, that we could go on there and be like, hey, we have this, I'll, um, or hey, we need this, and we could kind of interact in that way. I'm not sure, but it just was the, literally the first thing I thought about. I was like, I wish there was a need button that just was like, hey, as a church, we need this, or hey, as a fam- there's a family that needs this, or a person. Okay. Yeah, I, I also had this thought of like a service board. So rather than like, you know, standing up and asking, or you know, saying these are the things that we, you know, need every single week, and you feel like you're then prodding people having like some sort of board up where it says needs in the church or service in the church and then needs in the community or service in the community where like specific roles that maybe need to be filled you can like list that up for the church side and then for people who want to go out and do something in the community they can talk to you possibly get that started or talk to the leadership possibly get that started and then post up something on this service board where people can come up and be like oh I love this idea because you know some people don't have the leadership, I guess, to like go out and start that. But if they see that it's up there, they see that it's something that they can do, they'll sign up and they'll be on board. Okay. Tyrone, let's go. Mor- morning, my name is Tyrone. This may be a little idea that kind of encompasses everything they, uh, everybody was talking about, and that is on your text for the week and what to read. If you have a little section there, that uh, is the last minute sign up 
and also uh, what you were just saying about what we what we need okay. or something like that. Okay. Then, then everybody Pass seeing that. Yep. Yeah. Hi, I'm Brent. First, a uh, word of encouragement. I'm blown away by the question and your vulnerability sharing the stage up there. I do this professionally as a business owner and a leader for two decades. And I'm going to offer, I'm hearing all these amazing ideas. It's very difficult to scale. And we've got the right people in here, but capturing this and getting the right processes and tools in place. Um, and I hope you never lose this kind of restart mentality. Um, and I suppose, you know, what I'm saying is that you have the right spirit uh, in this, but if we don't set up the right feedback loop from the beginning, people are going to feel like they're not heard. And, and I don't know if anybody's taking notes here because I'm just looking around the leadership to see if anybody's capturing all this. You don't want it to kind of fall through the cracks already. It feels like seeing through my fingers. And uh, But a lot of great ideas. Uh, having been a leader before, being able to open up the stage here, ask what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, how we can improve. I mean, this is, I'm just encouraged by the spirit in this room. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. All right. Um, Jordan, I feel like uh, it's a good time for you to come up. Yeah. Um, I, um, Jordan has been working on something that I think answers some of these questions. Um, I'll let him present it, and then I've got a challenge for everybody, actually. Um, so... Basically, exactly what you guys are asking. Um, it's something called Care Portal. It was developed um, for as a connection through social services to work with churches to fulfill needs in the community specifically. So I've been partnering with the developers um, in this county. Um, and so how it works is you'll sign up, you'll get an email every time a social worker has a need for a new foster placement or if they've rescued women from sex trafficking that they need just stuff to get started up. It's a lot of financial stuff, but it's also tangible needs. Um, and so it's just so easy and it's there and it's listed and it's right in your email. Um, the other cool thing about it is we can post in church needs as well. So if there was a family in here that needed a bunk bed or a lawnmower or something or a plumber, we can post them in this app and then everyone would get an email saying, hey, we've got a family who needs this. Then you just say, I'll help out. And then you get in contact with that family and figure out when you're gonna be able to do that. So if you can throw up that QR code that's in there, everyone pull out your phones right now, scan this, you'll sign up. You'll get an email saying that you are now a responder through Shine Church. Um, it is a really cool resource and it is so easy um, and some of the cool things is that you get to actually interact with a lot of the families that um, are posting these needs. And so you'll get, if, for example, if there's, I like the bunk bed thing, because it's so, when there's a child in need of a bed, like just to be able to go, you go to Target, you pick up that bunk bed, then you bring it to the family and you can pray with them and just support them and be like, here's this bunk bed, we love you. Like, enjoy your life. Um, <laughs> It's, it's just, it's the easiest thing guys. And it's, it's so, and it's so, it's a lot through your email. So like I said, you'll get an email every time a new need comes in and I'm getting all these emails of you guys signing up right now. <laughs> Last night we had 15 people. So let's see if you guys beat them. Um, but <laughs> easy. Yeah. Competition easy. always. Guys. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, so the URL is shinechurch.life slash care. Um, that's going to bring you to our Shine Church page on there. There's a sign up button on there, so you can do that as well. Um, and if you guys have any questions about this or any other ideas about serving the community and stuff, can you throw out my contact information? This is my email, my direct cell phone number. So you guys feel free to reach out anytime. We can talk over stuff. We can kind of brainstorm and how we can make this a better tool for our community. Um, but it is really, if you have the heart to serve the community and you just don't know where to do it, this is just gonna 
fill your inbox with opportunities. Um, so really awesome. And we'll put the QR code up after service again. So if you missed it, you can go ahead and do that later. Did I miss anything? No, you're good. Great job, Jordan. Uh, anybody else blinded by the bright red pants? I mean, that's that like, what, dang. Um, so God is providing actually opportunities for this, uh, what you guys are saying, um, and I love the heart that, that has been coming out in the midst of this. Um, with, with the care portal, um, if you have a need, um, post it. It'll go to Jordan. Jordan will filter and make sure that it's good, and then he'll submit it, and then you get, you'll get an email. But this only works if everybody participates. I mean, that's, that's the truth. Um, and all these great ideas, they only work if, if we all see the importance of um, doing this together. Um, if, if not, then what happens is there's gonna be one or two people that totally get into it and start to jump in, um, but then they're totally gonna get burned out um, and feel like they're alone um, and just, you know, then, it, then it's not effective. Do, do you guys... Am I communicating that wrong? Um, so trying to just, you know, we, I, I sit here, here here's, my, here's my thinking even. I'm sitting here thinking, okay, great. Well, that was really convenient on how all these people wanted to sign up list and the care thing. And oh, look, we had the care porthole. How many people are gonna walk out of here? Wow, they manipulated that really well. <laughs> That was not the heart. That was not at all. But as Jordan's up here, I'm like, oh my gosh, that could totally be taken that way. I can totally see that. I, that is not our heart at all. Um, our heart, honestly, is to invite you into the back room of church offices and see that there are just some real practical day-to-day -day stuff that we want um, to involve and encourage you to get involved in. Um, and that is even just the ideas and the implementation of how do we serve one another well? How do we serve our community well? Um, and Jordan has done an incredible job in the last month um, learning about this care portal and, and getting involved with it. Uh, and it could be a tool. Um, let's try it. Let's see how it works out. Um, I think that even from a church leadership structure, we'll post needs, hey, kids workers, you're gonna get an email on that, pray about it, and you know, I think you just simply reply, I can meet that need, and you click on it. Um, we'll try it, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but thank you for being willing to have this discussion and um, go through this. Um, I don't want to dismiss, though, without making sure that everybody has had their opportunity to, to speak out. So anything, yes, Jake. Um, this is Jake. I lead our safety and security here at the church and just the need for transparency. Um, I really do appreciate, I've led church security at three different churches before this. And I have to say that this is different here because Dan's heart, DJ's heart, um, Anytime I've brought up a need, like we needed a new AD, just done. How can I support you in getting this accomplished? And for the people that volunteer on our team, um, the amount of sacrifice and time that they spend, they still have the opportunity to come with their family, to sit down, to enjoy service. And for us, it's, it's our heart to serve, but also the care and compassion that comes from church pastoral leadership to say, how can I support you in order to get this done? And it wasn't a, hey, you know what you're doing, go figure it out, make it happen. We're just here along to support you along that way. And so for me as a ministry leader, I just wanna say thank you to both of you and to this church because you all make this happen. Thanks, Jake. Hi, I'm Heather. I always forget to say my name, but I've been here forever, so. <laughs> um, but I'm on the prayer ministry, and I feel like that needs a plug, because i extreme introvert and hate this mic, but I will pray for you. I, I will pray for you. So please, um, it's on the website, I think, the prayer request little button. Yep. Um, there's like eight or nine of us, I think, and, and it's, I, I would pray for you, so. <laughs> That's good, thank you. 
Um, my name is Mia. I also hate this mic. Um, <laughs> The, um, the mic has done nothing to end up. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, okay, sorry. Um, I would just like to say um, that I don't like speaking out, um, and you guys found a way with the texting thing, um, and I always um, would sit here for 20 minutes. To s I literally did that today. I sat here for 20 minutes deciding if I should share or not. Um, but I would just like to give a shout-out to you guys for bringing a second thing so that actual people can share because I know that not everybody here likes sharing and so you can just go to your phone and text it so that's nice. Thank you. Anybody and you don't have to share right now if you want to that'd be great but if you don't want to I totally understand come see DJ myself or any one of the staff members Peter, Jordan. Um, if any of this today didn't set well with you in your heart and your spirit, we want to know about that. Um, and I know I've said this from time to time, but I'm gonna continue to say it. Um, don't ever walk out these doors without having that unrest settled. Meaning, there are times that I say things that I don't even know that I said it in a certain way that maybe offended somebody. Um, I've got a great staff around me that are helping me to do that and go, hey, you know when you said that, that makes it, you, you'll catch me when I start going somewhere and I'll be like, wait, hold on, how do I say this? It's because the staff is gonna nail me on Tuesday on how I said that. Um, so we're, we're working that, but I just want you guys to know, and I hope you really believe this, um, we would never want anybody to leave this church because of unrest or something's not setting well without you coming and talking to us. Um, so if anything that was done or said today didn't sit well with you, come let us know. Um, and I'm actually praying and hoping that we're gonna get to a place where in the midst of the service, somebody would be willing to raise a hand and go, okay, this isn't, this something's not right in my heart right now. Uh, and be able to actually share that so that we can talk about it as a family. Because if we're gonna be a family, then we need to address things like a family addresses things, which I appreciate all the good feedback. I absolutely love that. Um, but one of the things that we talk about as a staff is that many times we'll hear the good things, but we don't get any of the critique. Any of the, and we want that. We, because we're only gonna get better if you give us your thoughts and ideas in, in regards to that side of things. So I um, want to just thank you. Any, anybody else want to say anything? Okay. I just want to thank you for being a part of this process. Oh, yep. All right. This is really brave for me because this is not something that I can speak in front of 10,000 children, but don't put me in front of two adults. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know what? We're all kids. <laughs> We all have to enter the kingdom of God like a I children. Know. So just, yeah, okay. No, Sorry. I just wanted to say, my husband David and I, we were looking for a church home, and we were sitting in a Cane's restaurant, and this whole big group of people walked in, and we could just feel the love and just feel, you know, the smiles and the family atmosphere with this huge group of people. And so I'm not, I will walk up to someone individually, and, you know, so I did. It was a teenager in the group, and I said, what is this? What's going on? Because we were drawn to it. And they said, we're Shine Church. You should come try us out sometime. And I went back to my husband. I was like, oh, this is like real. Like these people are genuine. Like they're really having community outside of a building, which is what we were so hungry for. And, you know, and then the name of the church, it was like they really do shine, you know, outside of these mm. four walls. So that made a huge impact on us. We came and visited and we've been here ever since. So <laughs> thank you for sharing that. What an incredible testimony. I, we make a difference when we just, go hang out together even sometimes. The people are, are drawn to that and that's, that's really good. Um, I, oh, right here. What's, well, while the mic goes away, I wanna, I wanna offer something to you. This came up last night and I, I don't want you guys to miss on this either. Um, maybe God is spurring something in you to even do something just even in your immediate community, your neighborhood, um, your, your, your cul-de-sac or block or whatever. Um, I, 
I believe in this so much in regards to serving our community. and what, um, We have funds that you provide, and when you give, we take 10%. We automatically put some into local, global, Israel, and alms, and we kind of break it apart. We have money in our local missions fund that if you want to do a block party, come talk to me. Shine will finance it for you. If you have an idea to reach out into your little neighborhood and you uh, need help financially to do it, come talk to us. We'll, we'll do that. When I said we'll, it's all you. I mean, it's, it's from you. It's from your resource. Let us come alongside of you um, and let's let God open our hearts to creative ideas and thoughts and then let's go do them. And let's reach out to our community. So I just want to let you know that I feel really shamed by this. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I'm going to dismiss everybody else, but you and I will talk. No, I just. <laughs> I, I, I debated on whether or not I'd say this on, on the mic or not, but the, I appreciate the transparency that you were showing the backroom conversations with us. Because uh, in the past, when I would go to church at other churches, I did walk away feeling shamed or guilted um, as if I couldn't provide whatever it was that they were in desperate need of because the season of life that I'm in was too busy and I wasn't able to neglect my family to go uh, serve the church. And so um, that doesn't necessarily mean that I can can help out everywhere, but I appreciate the fact that you guys are sharing um, your vulnerability and trying to figure out how to articulate that to us. Um, with that said, I'm not taking it, this is my personal opinion, I'm not taking it in any other way than you just being honest okay. and genuine. And that is one thing that I absolutely love about this church, is that it is honest and genuine. And anyone who doesn't know Dan, um, you know, I, I have never served at a church um, in, in any capacity um, other than maybe like a youth group a, a, until Shine. And, uh, and it's because of the, your willingness to always um, support and, and be just transparent. You never, you never tried to pressure me into teaching a class. You never tried to, to do any of that. And then you are always asking, how can I help? Um, and so you're still trying to serve me even when I'm trying to serve uh, the church. And so I appreciate that. And so anyone who doesn't know Dan, um, I think this is as genuine as it gets. Um, so I don't feel shamed, and I, I personally don't feel that anyone should feel shamed by this message. Um, but I get it, because there is a lot of uh, heartbreak uh, associated with some of this. And I am one of the people who put in my name to serve, and no one ever called me back. And I am the guy who said, I want to be a part of this. And they said, no, we're full. We don't need you. Um, and so it's, you know, it, there, there's some probably some scars there on my end. And I appreciate what you're doing. And I want to make sure that you... Uh, can have the awkward feeling of standing up there while I'm saying that and giving you a compliment. So. Dude, I'm like, shut up. Just stop talking. No, <laughs> that was just internal mindset. Sorry. I didn't mean it that way. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Um, all right. Um, let me just close with this scripture. We'll get you out of here. First Peter 4, 7 through 11. The end of all things is near. Would you guys agree with that? Uh, The end of all things is near. It's coming closer for sure. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sin. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Church, God has given us instruction in that little scripture on how to handle things as end times gets closer. And it's not about arguing and it's not about trying to win our position. It's actually about serving, having hospitality, praying, speaking as the Lord leads us to speak, not out of our own opinion or out of our flesh. And ultimately, the whole purposes of it is to bring God glory. And that is the heart and that is the hope of of what we have presented to you today and what you've interacted with is that we want to see God get glory. 
So Heavenly Father, we come to you and we pray that you would be glorified, Lord. Lord, I pray that if there's anything that was discussed today that was not of you, that you would make that very evident and that we would forget it before we even walk out this door. But Lord, the things that are from you and the ways and, and issues and, and particular things that you spoke to each of us individually, Lord, I pray that we wouldn't be able to get away from those things. Lord, I know that um, every everything in this church and even in this community, every need could actually be met if the body of Christ would just listen to your heart and follow your direction. And so Lord, that's what we pray, is that we would be obedient servants to hearing your voice and your heart. And so Lord, I pray that you would speak to each one of us and you would help us to uh, engage ourselves with you so that we can then engage in our church community and our um, our living community, our city, and our country, or county, and Lord, I pray that you would just, um, you would just give us the humble hearts to, to serve well. Remind us that um, to do what you did for us, Jesus, is to voluntarily put ourselves under others. And so, Lord, help us to do this well. And so, Lord, we thank you for these things in your name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen.